So let's take a walk down the back. We'll see what's just gone into this vehicle and what we're gonna be working with. So it's just had a drifted drawer system installed in the back here. So you can see we've got a angle fridge slide. Uh, we've got a couple of drawers and table on top, slide out table. Um, pretty classic drifter setup, but they do such a great job up there in Gloucester. And what we're gonna go and do is put inside one of these wings over here, we're gonna put an uh, air compressor. Um, pump up his tyres, a TJM air compressor, and like we said, we're going to put the solar system on the roof to add to his um, dual battery system, his existing one. So let's get the bonnet up and get stuck into it, and we'll show you how we go. Let's take a look at the solar installation on this. So we've come up through the snorkel because it already had wiring coming up there from the installer of the light bar. I'll show you what we've upgraded to. Um, so we've got a cable gland nut there. So there's a rubber seal behind there, clamping down hard on the plastic, creating a water seal. And there's also a rubber grommet inside of there that as you do that up, clamps down on the cable and really creates a watertight seal. One little trick to what we've done here too is some heat shrink over the end of the sleeving. Uh, sorry, heat shrink here. So what that does is shrinks down on the heat shrink and then also shrinks down on the cable, allowing a small round amount of cable to go through when we've got an uneven number of strands in here. Um, and that allows a round surface for that grommet to really bite down and create a water type seal. Then we've got a P-clip up here running along the sill there um, because I don't blame the customer, but you really don't want to drill through the roof. So you want to get away from drilling any holes through the roof. Um, so this is probably one of the easiest ways to get around that. So coming out of the snorkel, up there, a bit of Sikaflex in the sill, and then we've split the harness off here, a bit of heat shrink there, separating the harness running to the steady light bar, and then off to the solar. And you can see under here, so there's our heat shrink where they split and go to the solar module, so positive and negative there. Um, and then I'll just show you down here, so this is the exiting point. So it comes down through the snorkel and out through the same sort of cable gland down there. So creating a nice watertight seal on that cable coming out of the out of the airbox. So let's jump up the top and we'll check it out from bird's eye view. So this is how we've gone about the installation of the mount. So we've got two stainless steel bolts mounted from the bottom here. So you can't see, we want to make it as stealth as possible. So you can't see any mounting. Um, and one reason that we've gone with this, so this is a Thunder 150 watt solar panel. Um, the main reason we've gone with that one is mainly for cosmetic reasons. We wanted to keep it the black look up here. And they're one of the few solar panels that has an actual black outer rim rather than the aluminium. So when you're down on the ground, um, looking front on to the vehicle, or when you're out the back looking back on, you can't actually see that the solar panel's up here um, because of just having it far enough back from each edge means that it's not visible from the ground. So it makes it look as stealth as possible, but it's up here doing its job. It's keeping that battery charge and keeping up with the angle fridge. So we've managed to get two eight mil stainless bolts reinforced with washers under the straight through here and I'll see if I can get down in there and give you a look. So there's our nylock nut, stainless nylock nut and the bolts coming through the framework here. So we've got one of those on each end, one down here as well and then we've just got some subtle little brackets over here with a big um, pot rivet head, so the big head pot rivet so it's got good surface area to bite into. Well, we've just got one on each end there, supporting it. So there we go, that's the Thunder 150 watt solar panel. Looks nice. Matches the colour of the roof rack and not visible from the ground. So we've achieved what we set out to do. Set on this vehicle is if we look down in here, we just want to get rid of some of this mess. So all the lights that have been installed on here. Um, it just They've just used the universal harness that comes with the lights and just wrapped up all the slack. The winch cables also, they're all just rolled up, rolled up. So we're gonna try and neaten that up. And when there's so many accessories installed in a vehicle like this, 
you start adding more and more and doing that type of thing, it's just a bird's nest by the time you finish. So we're just gonna try and neaten that up and shorten the length of those cables. So the next thing we've got and installed is the TJM air compressor into one of the wings in the side of the drifter drawers here. So this is our switch for it, we'll just flick that on. You can hear it purging up. Once it gets to pressure, it will actually cut out. So it's um, we've got a pressure switch on the top of the canister. So when it hits its pressure, it will just turn off. And then as the pressure drops um, through air lines or whatever, it will just re-purge up again. So we'll just turn that off. So you can see the air compressor down in there. Um, so there's our pressure switch. There's a hose connection right there. So you can connect your air line straight to it. Um, fuse and relays are all mounted on the back of the panel here. Um, and then that's all tucked away by the covering up of this wing. So the wing goes on in that location. It's a bit tight, which is probably what you want. And then you wouldn't know that the air compressor's in there. He's just waiting on the mounts. So Drifter usually have brackets that come out of the side there, you're just waiting on those. So that'll support that lid. Once it goes on, it'll have, have three frames that it can sit on. So there's the installation of the air compressor. We've gone through the solar panel. We've neatened up the wiring up the front. up here and show you we've got a LED light up here and um, now it's touch sensitive so just one tap there light on light off so just to illuminate in the back of this vehicle just reach in tap there lights on tap there and that's obviously wired off his um, auxiliary battery um, in the back of here we've got an angle fridge socket to power up the angle fridge um, angle fridge sockets are quite good because unlike a cigarette lighter, they're not prone to vibrating out. The angle fridge socket actually has a two-prong plug, plugs in, and then a collar to lock it into place so the cable can't come out of position. So we've wired that all to the auxiliary battery. Obviously, we want the fridge and lighting and all that to run off the auxiliary battery so it can't flatten the main battery. However, we have done the air compressor to the main battery, so every time you want to use the air compressor, you should be running the vehicle. Main reason for that is a DC-DC charger is a 25 amp charger. The compressor could draw up to a 40 amps, so it's drawing more than the charger could ever put in. So basically by running off the start battery and just having the engine run while you're pumping up your tires, um, it just means that the alternator can keep up with it and then we've got good power out of the compressor. So yeah, we've got the solar panel up the top, which you can't see from the ground. I'll give you a bit of a run through. So walking around the vehicle. Coming right out the front. Looking at the front of the vehicle, can't actually see that it's up there. So it's nice and stealth with that black frame around it. It doesn't stand out at all. Um, we've tidied up all the wiring in the front here, which I'll just show you. Here's the bird's nest that come out of there. So we've just cut all that out, neatened it all up. You can see through there. Just direct lengths, so no excess cabling. So just direct amount of cable needed to go to each light and to the winch controls. Those were the three main ones. That winch control up to the module in there was all just bound up. Um, and so was all the lighting wires all just bound up. So we're just taking that length out. So yeah, that's pretty much the project for today. I think the next stage is we're gonna get some more roof lighting in that um, for camping down the back, facing down where he's cooking. Um, yeah, with that, stay tuned, that'll be part two.